So today I just want to give a fermenting pot a try. So it's a basically it's a it's a pot with a lid that you can use to ferment cabbage and for example you can make kimchi or sauerkraut. Um, it the only thing different from a jar is that it's got a it's kind of got this Y-shaped channel that goes all the way around, so it's a double wall. Um, and what you do is you put the lid on top, and then you'll fill this up with water. So what happens is the water creates an airtight seal, so the air can't go into the pot. But as the vegetables and things are being pickled and fermented, all the gases released can escape through the channel. So it's like a it's like a one-way valve where air can go out, but it can't come in. So that's what you know. That's what you need to ferment things. Basically, you want to have a tight seal, and then you know all the chemical reaction happens. Um, I've tried this once, but it was too low, and it just it didn't feel right. So I think it's more practical to do a taller and skinnier shape. Um, and one thing I have to remember is to also make a half or like a circle, like a kind of like a plate, um, and then cut it in half, and that will act as a weight. So you'll put, so you have your jar, you'll put your vegetable in it, you put your brine in it, and then you'll put the stones on top so that all the, all the substance gets pressed down so it's always submerged and none of it is above the brine. So that's another a component and then there's also the lid. So I think what I'll do is I'll make the lid off the hump and then I'll use the remaining clay to make the pot itself and then I'll use a separate lump of clay to throw a little disc on a different bat and then I'll do like a bit of design on it cut it in half so it's this one will be a little bit longer than usual because there's more components to it and it's also a new thing that I'm trying um, to get that wide channel basically what I have to do is I have to fold the rim down to double up the thickness and then I'll cut it through the middle open it up create two wall and then pull it up all right so the lid is going to determine the opening of the jar um, I also want it to be quite straight, almost like a like a bell or like a dome shape. Um, that way, it can we can have a thicker channel or like a deeper channel, and it can go in quite easily. Um, it also means that I can have more water in the channel, which means I have to top it up um, less often. I'm also going to make sure I leave a bit of clay down the bottom um, that way I can trim a little handle for like picking up So in terms of the base, I think that's a good amount. So it'll be about that wide and then shrink a bit. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I don't want to start off too big. So I'm just compressing the base now. All right, so let's bring up the wall. Just a little bit taller with the wall. Yep, so let's finish that off. And then just leave it like that. Um, all right, so I'm just gonna take Let's get this off. I'm just gonna make sure I'm pushing down. 
So okay if it goes a bit off centered. Um, probably don't need that much clay. About there. Oh, before I bring that out, I'm just gonna cool, so it's about that much. And now with this remaining lump of clay, I'm gonna throw the body or the jar itself. So for the jar, it wants to be, I want it to be a bit narrow on the bottom, comes out and then brings it back in. So very typical shape. So I'll start off with a cylinder. Start around there. Uh, I guess you can't really see, but I think that's maybe two centimeters. Whoops. Maybe two centimeters down the bottom. And I'm just gonna open it up now. So I'm not gonna open the base too much because I don't want this to be too wide of a, of a shape. I think I should have started off with less clay on the bottom. So that now it's gonna, it's gonna bring a lot of that clay up. This clay seems to like a lot of water. It gets it gets sticky really quickly. So it's still quite thick. So maybe a couple more pools. There's still, there's definitely a lot of clay up here. So let's do, let's try and straighten everything out. Yep, I think that thickness is about right. So I'm just gonna close up the top a little bit. And before I shape it, I'm just gonna rip the outside. Just to get rid of like all this slip. I'm also gonna trim out the excess here. Now I wonder if I should do the, maybe we should do the rim last and do the shape first. Um, I think the base needs to be trimmed a bit more. I think it's getting there, I think. The base is fine. I think it's about this point. Come out a little bit more. Three out here. And then back inwards. Like so.
maybe just a little bit more down here It's mainly this section here, this curve, try to focus on. The bottom, I think once the, f the base gets trimmed, it's gonna, it's gonna look a bit lighter because it's gonna go inwards a little bit more. Um, and I can exaggerate this curve a little bit more during trimming. So now let's do this rim. So I wanna fold it, fold it, what would be better, inward or outwards? It's probably easier outwards. All right, let's fold it outwards. I don't really need much. So I guess I have to be very careful not to make this a hollow rim. Just blend that part back together. I can join that curve back, like this area here. I can smoothen that curve once I've done the rim itself. So I'm just gonna give myself quite a flat base to start with. And then with something sharp, but not too sharp. So in this case, I'm gonna use the tip of the wooden rib make sure it's down the middle ah oh, you know what I haven't been doing I haven't checked this so it's too big so before I go too far I'm just gonna close this back up Something I should have checked earlier before cutting open the rim. Now it's got a bit lumpy. Because obviously now that it's split, it doesn't wanna it's not one piece, so when you squish it or when you collar it, that's better. Um, it's gonna cause issues. So now just something to keep in mind. Make sure you check your dimensions before you do this part. So is this going to be a problem? Just let me have a look. I'm hoping that channel is still there. It's just going to take a bit of work cleaning it up. So I'm going to fold, I'm just going to open up the top bit here. And I think eventually I'm going to have to cut that just to fix the, see how lumpy that is or like how uneven that is. Um, and then I might use the just the butt of the trimming tool, uh, the needle tool. Actually, no, that one's too still too big. So maybe, maybe I'll just use this chopstick. Just to get that channel started. All right, so it's better. At the same time, I'm just going to compress the rim and try and get it back as centered as I can. I'm just going to widen the channel a little bit, like so. And I'm going to see if I can fix this. I might just need to cut a little bit off here. Oops. Didn't go all the way through. All right. It's all very rough, but I think this is definitely salvageable. All right, so that feels better on the outer ring. That's better on the inside as well. So now I'm just going to fix this little bit. This is, I think from where it was cut before, there's a little bit of clay that's, see that? That's split open. You can see like little dotted lines. Um, so I just need to make sure to fill those gaps. So there's no bubble inside 
but at the same time, I just need to be careful not to thin out the rim too much. All right, so it won't be a it won't be a perfect rim, but that's okay. Um, so I'm just gonna double check on this. So I think that's pretty good. I think that's it's gonna sit at the the deepest end. Um, and because it's quite wide, uh, it's gonna be quite forgiving in terms of your lid as long as it it sits in reasonably well. Um, it'll be fine because the water is what creates the air seal. Okay. Widen it up a bit and just... So I'm going to start throwing that um, in the wall a little bit higher. Like so, and I might just push the channel in a touch. And now I'm just going to clean everything up. Yeah, the rim's really lumpy, and that's just because we had to color it in earlier. I think that's really made it off center. I just realized lump of clay on the outside. I can't cut it again, but just because there isn't much to work with. I want to end up cutting it and then I also want this to be a bit wider. Like so let's see what's happening here. Okay. So I'm just gonna smooth out this curve. Let's get it out of touch. That's better, but that's distorted this size. I'm just going to fix that. Yeah, I think the rim needs to be almost the very last thing you work on. That's all right. So you see if that's going to... It's just the right shape. I think one last thing is just to make this a little bit straighter upwards so it gets a nice it's one of those things where I can try and fix things but then sometimes the more the more I try the worse it could get so I think I'm just going to call it so double check again. It's gone a little bit narrow, but it will still fit. It will still fit. Um, that means I can bring this taller. It doesn't need to go inwards that much because you still want opening to be. That's actually much better. All right. Ugh. Struggling, but it's getting there. So now I'm just going to. I quite like these lines, to be honest, but. I'm going to give it a quick rip with a metal just to clean up the slips. And yeah, so I quite like having those lines around this area. So maybe. Reduce it slightly. Move it a little bit of texture back. Yeah, so there's a bit of water gathering down the inside. Yeah, that's nice. Here. Yeah. So we've got the lid, we've got the jar, I'm just going to cut this off the bat. Of what size 
the stone has to be. So it's going to have to be, because it's going to sit somewhere there, so it needs to be relatively bigger. So I think actually, the same size as the lid was, will probably be fine. It doesn't have to cover the whole thing and you cut it in half so that you can like put it in quite easily. Um, so I'm just gonna use a new bat because I don't want to touch this one yet. Um, so here's a little overall shape and yeah, the, the bottom's gonna get tapered in a little bit more. It's on the heavy side, but I think I didn't want to go too thin, knowing how much um, how much work it needs on the rim. Um, if it's too thin, it might not support all that pressure. Um, how big did I say it was going to be? Yeah, I can just use this. Um, so I'd rather having it quite a bit th thicker to start off with, and I'll shed a lot of that weight once I get to trim. Um, mostly the base, mostly the base is where all the weight's at. Um, so this is, I wonder if this is gonna be too big. I might just take a, no, let me, I'll center it and then I'll get it to the width that I want and I can figure it out. Yeah, that's probably gonna be too much. Um, so maybe I can make two out of it. Or I can just trim it a bit, because that's already, that base is the right height. And then if I center it down, it's gonna be, this is probably twice as much as I need. Yeah, I can definitely afford to lose some clay. Um, hopefully I didn't cut off too much. I want it to have a bit of a swell. So maybe again, I'll use, I'll use just the back of this trimming tool. Maybe I'll go a little bit slower. I think the wheel needs to go a little bit slower. So let's start again. Or maybe it's okay. That's kind of nice. I will keep it like that. Um, and the same needs to be done to the back, but so I guess I can either have it completely smooth and then while trimming I can do the lines, um, which would probably be more consistent, and then cut it in half once it's all done. Because if I cut it now, I can't trim it later. I'm just gonna take a little bit of that out. It's basically I've decided that I'll do the trimming or I'll do the lines during trimming. But maybe we'll just leave a bit of texture like that. Right. And because of how thin it is, I'm not gonna cut, I'm not gonna wire it off. Just because if I wire it off, I'm gonna lose a bit of that clay. So I'm just gonna keep it on the bat like that. That way, when it dries, it'll just release and it'll be smooth. And because I had that other wedge as well, I'm just gonna make two as a backup. Try the right size. And I wonder if I should put two bats and sandwich it. So that way, as it dries, it's not gonna warp or warp less. Yeah, so this one, I've just roughly done the plate. And then um, I'll just have to, yeah, so maybe. I'll do one with and one without, see if it makes any difference. So just to recap, so we've got the weight that's yet to be finished. We've got the main, jar or pot. So this will be, I guess this will be like a two person kimchi pot, if any. And then I also have, I won't touch it yet. 
So that's going to be the lid that goes on top. Yeah, so I have no idea if this is going to work or not. Um, hopefully it does. And if it does, I'll make sure I take a photo of it and maybe show it at the next business update. And also it will go on Instagram. So make sure you check that out if you want to see the finished product. Um, I'm waiting on my test tile to come back. And once it does, I think I'll be pretty close to getting my glaze, at least the base glaze ready to go. So I can actually finish a lot of the things that are just sitting on the shelf right now and doing nothing. Um, yeah, so that was a little bit more complicated than the other stuff and I was just winging it. So there's a lot of like, I guess, thought process and figuring things out. Hopefully that's, I, I find that interesting. So I don't know, um, obviously this is not a channel that's like, I haven't done this for years. It's only been a couple of years since I started. So everything's still quite new. So this is more of like a learning process for me and less of a demonstration. Um, but yeah, hopefully that was interesting. And yeah, if it works, I can start making kimchi at home. All right, see you next time.